Oh yeah. Uh, while we're here, so this is this is the rootstock that uh, was planted in the ground first. There's a number of ways to do this. We can plant the rootstock in the ground first, or we can grow a rootstock actually in a nursery. The advantage of doing it in a nursery is that when we take the scion, which is this piece of the plant, and in this particular instance it's Merlot, when we take the scion, we can actually graft it onto the rootstock in the nursery. The other way to do it is we plant the rootstock here, and then we can actually come out and field bud. So if you can imagine a stick coming out of the ground, we cut a little T in that stick, and we take a bud, just slip that little bud into that T, and then we wrap it around in tape, and that will actually form the new vine. I used to do it when I was a kid with peaches on the nectarine tree and nectarine on the pear tree, and my mum would come in in the morning and go, why the heck is there an apple on the pear tree? Well, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I know you guys are all watching TV, but I was actually out putting buds on other, other trees and seeing how they would grow, and that's how I got interested in this business. The other interesting thing is if we look at this vine or this vineyard, we see a lot of wires and a lot of metal, and this is what we call a lyre system. So when we grow this vine out, we're actually training it on two sides. And we do that for two reasons. The first reason is because this is a little bit more vigorous site down here. So we try to put out a little bit, a few more buds per meter or a few more buds per foot, uh, which means that we can get more crop out there and actually devigorate the vine in a certain way. The second reason why we grow a vine like this is we're also trying to open up the canopy or we're trying to get more light into the canopy. And so we use these wires to bring the canopy together and uh, allow us to control that. Uh, these two wires at this height show that the canopy is actually going to grow up here. So these two buds are going to produce a shoot. The shoot's going to come right up through, this, through these two wires as, as the season goes along. And we'll train those and we'll tuck those shoots into these two wires. Uh, and as the season goes along and the reason is is that we can then get the light to come in to this side of the vine and we can also get the light to come into this side of the vine and when we get light on the cluster that's how we get ripeness and that's how we get ripeness of tannins sugar maturity and flavor maturity which are all the things that we're most interested in when we produce wine um, the other thing that's interesting is well why do we plant in straight rows or why do we have rows going in this direction well, the most important feature for us is the sun. And right now, the sun is in the east because we're in the morning. And the west is out towards the coast, out towards Sonoma Coast, out this way. We're looking almost north, straight up the Dry Creek Valley right now. So you can imagine that planting north-south, we're actually going to get less heat and less light uh, by growing the vineyard this way. And the way to think about that is directly overhead, at three o'clock or four o'clock in the afternoon when the sun is the most intense we actually want to have no shadow on the ground so we want that canopy of that vine to cover that fruit enough so that we don't get sunburn because with sunburn we get dehydration increases in sugar and leaving the flavor behind so we want to make sure that we ripen everything in the in the in the best manner that we possibly can so providing a little bit of shade during the major part of the day at five o'clock in the afternoon as we get um, further on towards the day and we're talking here about the ripening conditions occurring in July and August we want to have that sun uh, be a little bit lower in the horizon which is what's naturally going to happen so with the sun lower in the horizon we don't get that same heat intensity as we would if we had ripening conditions occurring in May or June so these things are all important things to consider what rootstock should we use to match with the ground what sign or what plant we want to have on top of that, and then what canopy we want to use to match the soil, match the varietal, and match the road direction through the season.